Taiwan has a problem of food contamination. 19 infants in Shenzhen alone in problematic milk powder, with the youngest victim only two months old. In 2008, it was affected by a Chinese baby formula scandal that hospitalized 54,000 children, killing six. The contamination became widespread because it's hard to trace food back to the source, partly because most companies still keep records about their products on closed databases or even slips of paper. But this year, Taiwanese e-commerce platform Alting launched the world's first blockchain-based app for tracing food products. Darren Wang is Alting's CEO. Yes. So Alting, we started as an e-commerce platform. So we sell agricultural products uh, and we expand to other countries recently. Why do you care about food safety? I have a son. He's about one and a half years old. Taiwan market has some you know, milk powder problems. So I started to ask myself, what can I do for my children? So my methodology is I visit the farm and then I build a system for them. That system is based on blockchain. Blockchain technology is a way of storing and moving information across a network of users. If you've heard of it, it's probably in relation to the mining of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. But blockchain is more than that. Imagine a constantly updated spreadsheet full of data about transactions hosted on millions of computers simultaneously. The data is easily verifiable, and because there's no centralized version of it, it's almost impossible for hackers to corrupt it. That's the blockchain. And allows Alting customers to scan the sticker on a slab of pork and see everything from a pig's date of birth and medical history to the time of its slaughter and processing. Suckling pigs, right yeah, there. You can know the birthday for the you know, piglet. Yeah, it was born in this. November 2016. Yeah. Yeah. And then there are a bunch of different vaccinations. Right. And you don't think this is going to scare people off? You know, all these different treatments that pigs have to undergo? We don't really think so, because even you don't know about it, the pigs still take those vaccinations. By understanding more about the procedures, mm -hmm. customers will naturally build a trust. This is the cutting room? This is the primary cutting room. Okay. So this is the beginning of breaking down the animal. Kevin Wu is the COO of Alting's pork supplier. His company is responsible for entering detailed records about pigs, from birth to processing, into the blockchain. How many pigs do you process in this plant per day? Uh, we go up to 3,000 now. 3,000 a day? Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot. Well, we just started, so considering this industry, we're very small. What attracted you to blockchain? Why did you decide to start using that? I think traceability in the, in the future will be very critical for consumer, uh, because I think we live in a very complex world and there's some, so many choices to be made. So having, uh, having using blockchain, we can deliver that, that much information in a very simple method for consumer to decide what they want to choose. Is blockchain making you more money? At the moment? No. <laughs> oh. So I'm assuming that when you're laughing, it means that you're spending a lot of money on implementing blockchain. I have to say that with our team, with Darren, they have give, given us a lot of support. Okay. So I think the money spent is not exactly on the monetary say how much money, but really the time uh, that we put in. For your company, why is blockchain useful? At the moment, it doesn't really benefit me. I think it's, a, it's for the future. Right now, there's, people don't really understand it, but in the future, people will demand it. Blockchain isn't just for startups. A recent analysis predicts that by 2019, the food traceability market will be worth $14 billion. Massive multinationals are racing to design systems that can handle complex information flows for globally traded products. Those multinationals include Nestle, Unilever, and Walmart, the world's biggest company, which just completed two pilot blockchain programs. Centers for Disease Control states there are about 48 million cases of foodborne disease a year thought about a little differently. It's one out of every six Americans will experience a foodborne illness each year. Frank Yanis is vice president of food safety at Walmart, which means he's responsible for more than a fifth of all food sold in the U.S. If I were to buy this mango, maybe I have an issue, how long would it take you guys to find out where the source of the problem was. So one of the things we did is we got a package of the sliced mangoes before we started the pilot study. As a baseline, I brought one of them into my staff meeting and said, the traceback study starts right now. 
and I asked our team to trace those mangoes back to the source. And that was pre-blockchain? Pre-blockchain. It took six days, 18 hours, and 26 minutes. Wow. But with the blockchain solution that we piloted, we could get product information off of a mango, whether it's a code or a UPC sticker, mm -hmm. and we could tell you from which farms it came from in 2.2 seconds. Now, what's the difference between seven days and two seconds? If it's truly a food safety issue, seven days of contaminated product being offered is, is potentially a lot of illnesses or maybe even deaths. But how about on the other hand? What if you inaccurately or just in abundance of caution pull mangoes that weren't affected? For a retailer, seven days of lost sales, most of the mangoes will be unaffected. And so you can clear their good name faster too. Blockchain technology could save lives, but it's no silver bullet. It doesn't guarantee that information in the system is correct. A human or machine has to enter the data at the source, and a potential lie or mistake would be distributed throughout. So it seems to me like the weak chain in blockchain is the moment where you put that data, you upload that initial amount of data to the blockchain. You're still having a person put in, put in that data, so that's where they could you know, make stuff up. Um, how do you prevent that? What we know about human behavior and human psychology is if it's anonymous, I'm more likely to try to cheat. And so I think the blockchain solution in and of itself, the way it exists today with manual data entry on smart devices, reduces fraud. I think it's a powerful deterrent to unscrupulous behavior. Is it a foolproof 100% solution? No. I'm less likely to cheat because there's an audit trail that leads right back to my doorstep.